through a focus on education and economics with a trace of hard work, honesty, and integrity. And for more information, make sure you visit www.paxinc.org. That's where you can learn more about the organization, all the missions that they have, and what they're doing for the community, as well as while you're on the website, make sure you click on the tab that says the code so you can learn more about the codes of conduct that Pax Inc. created. Uh, also, while you're online, as you know, make sure you visit the Freedom Train website at www.freedomtrainradio.com. That way you can learn more about myself, my co-host Patrick Irvin, and Jamie Bashan. Learn more about the Freedom Train Network as a whole and the host of new shows that we have coming. As you know now, we have the Freedom Train Podcast, which you're listening to now. We also have the Fix the Sports Podcast, and we have many, many more shows coming up. So make sure you just stick around because it's getting bigger and better around here. Um, also, make sure you follow us on uh, Twitter at Freedom Train Net. Follow us on Instagram at Freedom Train Network. Subscribe to the Freedom Train YouTube channel. We're on YouTube now, so make sure you subscribe to the Freedom Train YouTube channel. Like our Facebook page, and don't forget about Google Play and iTunes. We're on Google Play and iTunes, so you can subscribe, and that way you can stay in the loop on everything that's going on on the Freedom Train Network, the Freedom Train Podcast Series, The Fix, and every other show that we have coming up. So today, 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 we have a great show. We're going to learn a lot today, so make sure you pull out your pen and your pad, put your thinking caps on, sit Indian style, whatever you need to do to get comfortable, because we have a great interview today. Two lovely women who are setting my city on fire right now. Uh, We're talking about financial literacy. We're talking about not just financial literacy, but actually taking that information and using it to become financially free. Uh, These two women are at the top of their game. One is the credit doctor. So if your credit got the flu or just the common cold, she can help you, right? And the other specializes in real estate. So if you're trying to learn about buying a house, if you're trying to learn about selling a house, if you're just trying to learn about how you can become financially free using your house, then this other young lady, she has the information you need. And who am I talking about? I am talking about Miss Jackie Calloway and Miss Lindsay Thompson. And I would like to thank these ladies for being on the Freedom Train and welcome them. And my studio artists want to give these ladies a round of applause. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for being on the Freedom Train podcast series with me today. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much. So glad to be with you guys this evening. Uh, uh, No problem, no problem. Eager to learn and just excited and ready to have some fun and learn more from you, learn more about you. So uh, let's get into it. So now before we get deep, 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 deep into the interview, we would like our audience to have some background information about you guys. So could you tell our audience information about yourselves and how you and why, how and why you chose the particular paths that you are on, and why financial literacy, why is it important? Go ahead, Jackie. (laughs) Okay, thank you, Joseph, Lindsay, so much. Well, I'm Jackie Calloway. I am a board-certified credit consultant and owner of Credit Rx. We are a local credit repair company that specializes in boosting your credit scores, okay? Um, A little bit about why I started in credit repair and financial literacy is I grew up um, in a small town called Attapogas, Georgia, okay? okay, and I saw the devastating effects of poverty. You know, um, we didn't have any 
running water. We didn't have a bathroom. You know, we, we were poor, but we didn't know we were poor. Um, I, my parents made sure that they, you know, did their best to provide for us. But as, you know, you go to school, you would see how other kids are dressed. You would see their parents pulling up mm-hmm. in nice cars, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. I eventually learned the power of money, okay? So right. as an adult, Joseph, what happened was um, because I wasn't taught financial literacy in school, uh, by the time I wanted to purchase a home, my credit score was, was a mess. I mean, I had mm-hmm. a, a 500 score. And, right. um, of course, I was denied for that mortgage and had to learn how to fix my own credit. Um, And I eventually got that score up to a 640 where I could purchase the home for me and my children. And um, at that time, I just vowed to be the answer. You know, I wanted to be the answer for people that were in my situation that here denied every single day. Um, I just wanted to be the answer for them. And so I started Credit Rx, and since then I've helped others, you know, um, with financial wellness and uh, learning how to budget and getting their credit together to purchase homes. Um, and my goal, of course, is to help many others along this path. So okay. super Shout excited out, about out that. Out of Puggles. Out of Puggles. <laughs> Say go. it right now. Out of Puggles. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh, goodness. I love it. Well, I'm Lindsay Thompson. I'm a realtor. I've been a full-time realtor for a little over five years. I'm with Keller, Real- Keller-, Keller Williams Realty in Tallahassee, Florida, um, and I specialize in the neighboring counties as well. Um, okay. And notice I said I'm a realtor, which is a little bit different than your typical real estate agent. Not every re- licensed real estate agent is a realtor. Um, okay. We are a member of the National Association of Realtors. Um, and we are held to a different code of ethics and standards than your average real estate agent. Okay. okay. And I, um, I had came from a background, well, I worked at a lobbyist firm, and I thought that was something that I wanted to do, being a lobbyist or working with something in public relations um, in that nature. I knew I always wanted to work with people. I wanted to be in a position that interacted with people on a daily basis, but um, it wasn't until I worked for them that I decided I wasn't going to do that. But once I started learning about what true wealth really it was or, or, or is and how to build wealth and making smart investments, I wanted to be very similar to what Jackie said, the answer for people to understand what it means to invest your money and make your money double and triple and make money in your sleep, so to speak, passive right. income. Um, I wanted to learn more about that. I wanted to help people with essentially the, one of the biggest decisions financially that you'll ever make in your life. Um, um, once I had the experience of handing a first-time home buyer their keys, I knew that that was it. That's, that's what I wanted to do. And right. just educating our community and doing well through smart, smart financial investments like real estate. And um, that's why I decided to try it, stick with it, and, um, yeah, and I'll probably do it till I leave this. I leave here. <laughs> that's great. Now that, that's great. Now, one of the greatest things about what both of you are saying is the passion that you have when you're saying what you're saying. So that's how I know uh, this is going to be a great interview, and it's already great already, but great information because you're passionate about what you're doing. So we definitely appreciate that from you, too. So, so this next question, thank you very much. So, so this next question is for both of you again, because both of you hit on it, talking about buying a house. And for most people, I know me growing up, never really, I never really imagined myself buying a house until I got halfway through college because I didn't know a lot of people who actually owned houses. And if we did know mm-hmm. people who owned houses, we didn't know that they owned their houses because we assumed everyone like us rent. So... Why is it important for credit for a person's credit to be in order, and what does a credit score have to do with buying a house? Because you mentioned it, but what does that mean? Why, why does all that go together to be able to buy a house? Well, Jeff, well that's a, do you want me I'm to sorry. Oh. <laughs> sorry, Lindsay. Um, that's a great question, Joseph. Um, first of all, credit is what stands between you and that home. Okay. okay. Um, lenders have a system that says. If your credit score falls below a certain number, all right, sometimes that's a 640, sometimes that's a 620, uh, 580. If your score falls below that number, they won't lend to you, right. period. They, they deny you. 
And so the reason that they deny you is because you're considered a high risk to them. They look at your score and say, okay, this person will pay me back or this person won't pay me back. And so, you're borrowing a lot of money. A lot right. of money. Exactly. Okay. Like Lindsay said, you're borrowing $100,000, $200,000 sometimes, right. you know, for homes or more. So what happens is your, your score, your credit score, is a, it's a snapshot of your financial health. And mm-hmm. it tells the lenders, you know, if you'll be able to pay them back. And so that's what makes me so passionate about credit is because what we do here at Credit Rx is vital. It's vital um, to our consumers. We're that bridge that stands between you renting and you buying. Mm-hmm. You know, we're that bridge between you building wealth and you making somebody else wealthy. So mm-hmm. that's why I'm so passionate about it because, you know, credit scores, you're treated differently when your scores are, are, are considered good scores versus when they're bad. If you don't okay. believe me, just walk in a bank. You'll see. So, <laughs> so right. that's my answer for it. Um, definitely vital what we do. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. She nailed it. It's yeah. Okay. The literal sense. You're borrowing a lot of money, and mm-hmm. they can spend your money. So right. you know, so many different things play to your credit score. You know, and the habits that you have daily play into your credit score. Are you paying your bills? If you aren't paying your bills or using your credit. Mm-hmm. Officially, you know, what makes any lending institution think that you're going to pay them on right. time or, right. or for different reasons? So those are some of the things that they look at. Lenders look at your credit. That's the most important part. They look at your debt-to-income ratio. Mm-hmm. They look at your accounts because they want to see how you're spending. So if you create good spending habits, obviously it's going to increase your credit score, mm-hmm. but it's going to just make you look like you're more responsible, therefore reducing your risk. Okay. Okay, and right, and and as you guys talk, I'm just thinking about myself and friends of mine as we move from high school through college to uh, adult life, and how we would buy cell phones and pay the bill for maybe six months to a year, and say, you know what, I don't want this phone anymore. <laughs> They're not gonna do anything to right. me, and just just move on to the next and just accumulate stuff and move on to the next. And now you're in your late twenties and early thirties and you're scrambling trying to get your credit together. But like mm-hmm. you were saying, it's, it's vital to have this information. It's vital to have at least someone teaching, especially our youth, what real financial literacy is. So by the time they're in their twenties, their, their credit is good and it, they don't have to scramble. So. Right. Okay. right. Cause credit is, it's just credit until you need it. See, it's right. an invisible thing up in the sky, you think, you right. know, until you're, you're ready to purchase a home or a car or, or, or even get a job. Because these days you can't even get a decent job without a good credit score. They'll run your credit. You know, you'll pay higher deposits right. on your electricity, you know, if you don't have good credit. So yeah. definitely important to start young. Definitely, and some yeah. some places may not even allow you to rent and all those things because of credit. So, yeah, that's, that's why. I, but mm-hmm. see, that's why I want. I really want to do this interview with you too because this information is vital for our community. You two are two vital components, two important parts of this community because of the information you have and the passion you have behind it and the willingness to be out in the community because people can actually reach you to you are reachable so that's why i i really appreciate what you guys are doing and the platforms that you've created for yourselves well, we appreciate you joseph uh, thank no you so, so so jackie this question is for you all right okay so let's say right i'm 11 between 8 and 11 my mom decides she want to get a new get a new cable bill get some new lights and her credit has been shot since she was eight. So okay. she, puts, she puts all of this in my name. And my credit gets shot. So by the time I'm 20, I really have horrible credit because bills were put in my name and they, weren't, they wasn't paid. So mm-hmm. how do I start to repair my credit? And how would you be able to help somebody in that situation? 
Right. Well, that's a great question, Joseph, and it's so funny you, you talk about this because this exact thing happened to me. You know, I don't know how it worked back in the days when I was a kid, but they could put light bills in your name and phone <laughs> right, bills in right. your name, and you're a kid. I never right. understood that, but it happened. My mom put a phone bill in my name, and I ran it up. I had a little boyfriend that I was seeing at, like, 13. You know, he lived in another state, and I ran that phone bill up, and, of course, you know, eventually it got taken to collections, and, you know, now it's on the credit report. But here's, here's where I would start, because it's very common um, to, you know, have bad credit by the time you reach 18, whether it's your doing or your parents doing. Um, the first thing that I would, I would help with is, you know, anytime you're needing surgery, what do you do? You go and get an x-ray, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want a doctor just cutting on you. You want an right. x-ray. And so what, what we do is we advise you to get your credit report. Your credit report is your x-ray. So you get one free credit report per year. You can go to annualcreditreport.com. That's okay. www.annualcreditreport.com. Or you can visit a site like Identity IQ or a credit mm -hmm. check total. You know, you'll pay a dollar for like a seven-day trial, but it will give you your credit health. It will tell you your scores, what's on your report, that sort of thing. That's the first step. The second step is you have to decide if you want to do it yourself or if you want to pay an expert. So okay. I often tell people, I don't know how to bake cakes, so I pay Publix to bake my cakes. Okay? Right. I don't want to mess up a cake. I want it to taste good. <laughs> so exactly. what we do is, you know, we, we, we sometimes do stuff ourselves and it ends up worse. Mm -hmm. um, so you, if you want to do it yourself, of course, you can start by adding positive credit. You can go to your bank and ask them for a secured credit card. You can mm -hmm. ask them for a secured loan, um, those type of products, because when your scores are low, you've got to put money down, okay? So those are called secured products, secured loans, secured credit cards. The other thing is um, you need to start disputing the items on your report. So, you know, there's a law that is called the Fair Credit Reporting Act that simply mm -hmm. says everything on your report has to be 100% verifiable, has to be 100% accurate, and 100% timely. And so there's over 300 pieces of information that a creditor has to um, report and abide by that law, the FCRA law. And so we're not saying that the account is not yours. We're just saying that the account is reporting inaccurately. The balance mm -hmm. is incorrect. The date open okay. is incorrect. You know, you okay. can find tons of reasons to dispute an item. Now, of course, if you don't want to do it yourself, you can always call me. You know, we do this every single day, free consultations um, for clients. You can call and pick my brain and just figure out what, what your next step needs to be. But start now. Don't wait. It's the right. key. All right. And what's your phone number? It's 850 466 7136. Our office hours are from 10 to 5, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Okay. And they can just give me a call. You know, we can set up a consultation. I can walk them through pulling the credit reports and then come up with a game plan to, um, to help their credit. You know, sometimes, you know, people say, I can't afford to get my credit, you know, straight. Sometimes you have to use your income tax money. You know, that's a great chunk of money that you can use to build your credit. Um, okay. You can defer a car payment, for example, um, to get a, a secured credit card. There's just so many ways that you can afford to you can't you 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 can't afford it. I'll say that right. you can't afford not to fix your credit. Okay. Because you're paying thousands of dollars in interest right. every month for bad credit. So you want to take care of it now. Right. That makes sense. All right. So I hope I hope y'all got your pen and pads out and writing this stuff down because. Being financially literate is a part of the game, so let's let's do this, people. All right, so so Lindsay, this question is for you. Um, and without okay. giving away your secrets, um, helping those who know nothing in the, about buying a house, can you walk us through the home buying process and what a person would really need to know to get the best house for the best deal? Okay. Well, that's a good one. Great question. Thank you. Um, well, there's really no secret, first of all. Everything, you know, I'm an open book. I'm very honest, mm -hmm. and that's something you should definitely look for when it comes to a realtor that you're looking at or, or while you're interviewing different realtors um, that could possibly help you. Um, mm -hmm. 
when it comes to, and, and I hear this all the time, and it's only natural because we are how we are and we're consumers and economics, but with real estate, you get what you pay for as a mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It is not like one of those situations where you go in and you see a pair of shoes on sale. You get what you pay for, and it is an investment. As we know, with smart investments, you do have to invest, whether it be some type of time or money, to get what okay. you need and then to see, you know, your, a good rate of return. Um, the first step, I mean, the key is really, again, just knowing where you stand, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. You want to talk with a realtor, first of all, um, that is not, doesn't have any problems talking with you, even if you're not ready. I special, I'm actually a realtor consultant, which is a little bit different than, again, some realtors or licensed real estate agents. Right. What we like to do is very similar to what Jackie said. You have to come up with a plan. Um, so you want to sit down and talk with a realtor first. And most people don't realize realtors are free to help you on the buying end. Um, we, are, we are paid based off commission, and we are paid out of the sale from the sellers, not buyers. So it is okay. absolutely free to work with a realtor, and I suggest you do so. A lot of people feel like they're saving some type of money or, or saving themselves from different things when they don't use a realtor when you essentially have free representation. So you want to sit down with a realtor. I obviously love to, especially working with first-time home buyers. It's one of the things I specialize in. And you devise a plan. Um, you've already obviously made the first and most important step, which is deciding to buy. But you want to decide first, you know, and figure out where you stand as far as credit-wise, how much you right. want to spend, and all of that. And that is usually done by talking with a lender. To me and other realtors, what we can do is educate you on the process. Then okay. you have to figure out where you stand financially, and that's where your credit comes into play, your employment, your debt-to-income ratio. But usually after I consult with my customers, I do have them reach out to a few lenders and it is based off of their needs because everybody's needs are different, and I recognize that. So there are certain lenders and people just like Jackie that I partner with to help people based off of their situation. Now, the way to get the best, I guess, the most amount of home you could say for the least amount of money um, is just basically being educated. I make sure to also, along with talking about the home buying process and talking about meeting with a lender and how that's important, I also make sure to educate my buyers on what the local market looks like in Tallahassee. Okay. That's okay. so important because many, many people think after coming off watching HDTV and seeing somebody <laughs> buying a house, they're going to get the same thing here. Real estate is very compartmentalized, and mm-hmm. a value is a moment in time. It can change very quickly. So I make sure once I talk with my buyers and understand their goals, whether it be time frame, how much they want to spend on a house, I make sure to educate them on the market. So that way they understand what their price point can afford them. And okay. they also know, too, when I do that, that I am in no way, I, I, I'm not going to allow them to offer or pay more than what a home is worth, so to speak. Right. Um, because okay. they have that education. So they're a little bit more confident, if that makes sense. So with real estate, right. you get what you pay for. Um, we're in a certain type of market now, the seller's market, so where I don't want to say sellers have upper hands, but there's just less inventory. So supply and demand, you know, that works. When you have less supply and the demand is high, that hikes up prices. But, again, you know, it, it's up to us to educate our buyers on the market, and that's what I make sure to do um, so they know they're making a wise investment. Um but there's just no secret key, so to speak. It's just speaking with somebody who's a market specialist and getting the process okay. started so you know where you stand. That's all. Okay. Well, that, that makes sense. <laughs> no, it does. Yeah, it, it does, does make yeah. sense because um, it's the best explanation I've ever heard. And mm-hmm. um, I've, I try to I – don't, I don't know a lot about real estate, I'll admit, but I tried – I've read things, read books, read articles – videos and I hear people talking and it's it sounds like mumbo jumbo but you just like laid it out perfect so thank you <laughs> mm-hmm. can I say one more thing really quickly one more thing Go when ahead. it comes to that a lot we get calls every I get calls every day of people wanting to see property right they just see mm-hmm. a house they drove by or they saw the one mm-hmm. they wanted to see it. and I and some people get mad with me because I won't meet with them 
first of all, I don't know who you are. And second, we don't, again, know where you stand. Credit-wise, right. you could even qualify for a loan, what you can afford, what you want. And it's almost like malpractice. And I always say to people, and I hope that the, the listeners understand this, mm-hmm. you wouldn't go in for a surgery, mm-hmm. you know, on your foot without having a consultation. Right. And exactly. buying a house and doing things like this that we're talking about is financial surgery. So any professional, I, I highly recommend that, as you're talking to people, you make sure that they sit down and they talk with you and they understand your situation and your goals. If they just meet up with you and don't give you any of that preliminary info uh, or a consultation, like what Jackie mentioned and what we're talking about, you, you may want to be careful. So, you know, it's just something to think about. In order to get the best service, you got to ha- start with a consultation and know where you stand with any professional. Mm-hmm. Okay. That, that definitely makes sense. So remember, people... Get yourself a consultation first. Find out what's right. going on. And they're free. Just jump right in. You know? And they're free. <laughs> right, right. The the greatest price ever, free. So let's come on, people. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> so now, the both of you preach financial literacy. That's that's um that's the end the end goal. Financial well, the end goal is financial freedom, but financial literacy is a tool right. that you use. Uh, and both of you right. use that tool for your individual businesses. So before we get into financial freedom, though, I do want to talk about financial literacy. And to, to both of you, what does financial literacy mean and how does one become financially literate? And I ask this question because some people think you can just go read a book or you can uh, like read one of the get rich, uh, rich dad, poor dad books or play one of the games and things and just become rich. So what's, how do you truly gain financial literacy and, and like what does that mean to you all? Well, Joseph, one of the um, – well, I'll just say this. For, for me, financial literacy is just having a knowledge of money, how it works, mm-hmm. credit, mm-hmm. how it works. Um, it, we, we overcomplicate it sometimes, but just simply how it works. You know, right. um, and so the first thing I mean, the first thing that I did to get financial literacy was I got a mentor. Okay? okay, find someone that's gone where you are trying to go, and get under them. Just talk to them. Hey, would you mind mentoring me? Some people will charge you a fee. Some won't. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I have a, a mentor that owns a very successful credit repair company up in South Carolina, and when I wanted to start a credit repair business, that was the first person I went to. I wanted somebody that had walked down the road I was trying to walk down. And right. I took a course of hers, and that course came with lifetime men- mentorship. And so she mentors me every single Friday religiously. And she pours into me, and I learn everything about credit and finances that I can from her during those calls. So the first thing that I did was get a mentor. I would suggest that. As far as my clients go, how I educate them is with with my clients, they're not just getting credit repair. You know, um, some companies you're just getting credit repair. You're just getting people disputing Mm -hmm. items for you. But Mm -hmm. with Credit Rx, we teach them on budgeting. We help them to set up a Excel spreadsheet so that they'll know what bills to pay out of what check, okay? Right, we right. help them set up an envelope fund. Sometimes you're, bu- you're blowing money on fast food. You know, we, we help you set up an envelope fund so you're not wasting your money. Mm-hmm. Um, we help them with debt snowball, paying down their debt so that they can live financially free. Um, we also teach them how to use their credit cards. That's a big thing is credit card right. debt in America. Right. So we teach them how to pay that stuff down and how to use it responsibly. Um, so I'm just a firm believer in telling your money where to go instead of wondering mm-hmm. where it went. So when that money gets in your hand, you have the power to tell it where, where to go. That's and of true. course, you, Joseph, you uh, hit on um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I love mm-hmm. that book <laughs> by Robert right. Kiyosaki. I do, yeah. I do read, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I read Rich, Rich Dad. I'm actually reading one of his books now um, on investing. Um, right. So that's a book, uh, Total Money Makeover by Dave Ramsey. Um, mm-hmm. Of course, um, there's a lady online called Alanya Kohlberg. Um, she okay. has an amazing um, investing class. It's called Zero to Investor. She's all over Facebook, but basically she teaches you how to invest in the stock market. You know, she was a single parent on welfare, you know, b- filed bankruptcy, everything. And she went from that to, you know, being a successful 
stock investor. So, you know, um, mm-hmm. Facebook is full of resources instead of, you know, yes, us getting on Facebook just to play and, and to <laughs> gossip a lot of times, right. you know, let's right. get on there and get in some of these financial groups like dream catchers on Facebook. You know, there's like 300,000 people in that group. That's all talking the same thing, financial literacy. So, you know, that, that's okay. my angle. Okay. Yeah. Leslie. Mm-hmm. Well, I have to say I completely agree with Jackie as far as getting a mentor or at least aligning yourself with people who who are already living what you would say your goals may be. Mm-hmm. Um, my, my mentor, my coach, because I have one too, mm-hmm. <laughs> friend, because it's for the accountability. We need it. One of the right. main things she taught me, I would always hear her say, was, you know, the important thing with anything you're trying to do, try to find somebody who does it. Uh, quicker, faster, and more efficiently than you do, mm. and and understand uh-huh. their habits. I think it's very true that you are, you know, the average of the five people that are closest to you. I think that is huge, and you want to have that accountability there, and you want to have people around you or uh, different things who will be very honest with you. I think that's mm-hmm. necessary. Um, so that's a big one for me. Um, when it comes to it. Um, and, of course, like you said, just educating yourself, not just educating, but reading. Um, and Because and, and, you are the movies you watch. You are the books you read. Right, you, know, you are right. the people you hang out with. So I think that's important. And when it comes to um, me and how I educate my customers on that end, on financial literacy, so to speak, I, I make sure that they know from the beginning, again, as I had mentioned, that I'm a realtor consultant. And so that mm-hmm. means I'm going to be with you from the very beginning, even if you're a year out, from the very beginning to the very end and beyond. And when I say um, the, from the beginning, I can link you up with different people that I've connected with that I trust, like Jackie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so right. Some of things when it comes to credit, devising a plan and whatnot. And we are there to help you create those good habits.